Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. My name is Ace and I got a OBS guide here for you. Allowing you to learn a little bit about OBS to get yourself started. Or, or well, even if you know what you're doing a little bit, perhaps you can still learn a few things to make your stream a little bit better. I will go into detail about every single aspect of the settings. But at the end of the day, it depends on your own computer. It depends on your own bandwidth. So trial and error is part of the process, guys. I will only give you the guidelines and explain what most of the stuff does so you know what to do. Now, if you're wondering why my screen is empty, that's because I wanted to avoid the twilight zone. Let's bring it back over and open up the settings. There we go. This is the screen that you will see if you open up the settings in OBS. And if you have OBS open right now, you can move with me. Or otherwise, just remember it, I suppose. I would highly recommend making a profile for streaming. I have several profiles, but we are focusing on Twitch right now. It's always good to have things organized. So you know where to look if something is off. Encoding. Now, I get a lot of questions, which is also one of the reasons why I make this video. About bit rates, encoding, frame rates, all kinds of stuff like that. Well, I normally say I can't tell you that because it depends on your computer and on your bandwidth, and it does. So keep that in mind as we well, approach the first critical setting. Well, first of all, use CBR. If you want to stream on Twitch, you have to use CBR. There's no way around it. It's a requirement of Twitch these days. So click it on and you're good to go. Enable CBR padding, keep it on. It's uh, st more stable if you have it on. And the option that you have if you turn it off nobody uses that it allows you to change your bitrate during your stream nobody does that there's no real good reason to do so so keep it on it's more stable and it works out better for you in the long run anyway even in the short run now a lot of the questions that i will get is what kind of bitrate are you using well first of all do a speed test google speed test find out what your actual upload speed is based on that you can give yourself a good bitrate. Now, for example, the guideline for 720p, 30 FPS is about 2K. Now I stream at, uh, well, 720p, so usually you would say go for 2K. Well, I, with trial and error, I have noticed that I don't need a lot of bitrate. I don't need specifically 2K because I currently play TF2, I play Isaac. Those games are not really high motion, super flashy. It's not like a, uh, a World of Warcraft raid when you have like 40 people doing all kinds of crazy stuff, right? And you want to keep that crisp. So I know that I can go a little bit more down. I can go down, which is good because I'm not a Twitch partner. I don't have encoding options. So the lowest I can go without, uh, without sacrificing quality is a good thing because that would mean that more people can watch me. Well, if you are a Twitch partner, it doesn't matter because if people can't watch your source, they can scroll down to a, a low, medium or height encoder, which uh, does Twitch for you if you are a Twitch partner and they can still watch. But if you are watching, uh, I, if you are streaming, I would never go above 2K for 720p unless you are a Twitch partner or unless you specifically want to stream at 60 FPS, for example, for whatever reason then I would recommend 2500. Even if I were a Twitch partner and I would stream at 60 FPS um, on 720p, I would really never see a reason to go above 2500. I wouldn't. That's pretty much the cap. So pretty much take the guideline if you are playing high fancy, if you're playing fancy flashy games, like for example, MMO raids, Stick to 2K. If you're not playing games like that, but more like Isaac and such, you can bring it down to roughly 1800, depending on your encoder, which is something we'll get back to, or which we will work to in a uh, in a minute as well. But just stick to 2K for 720p, and you're pretty much good to go, assuming your bandwidth can hold it. Now, if you want to have a codec, I would recommend using AAC. The usual uh, is 128 or 160. Uh, I'm using 160. But honestly, it doesn't matter. I have tested it. People haven't really noticed the difference anyway. So, but I would not go below 128 whatsoever. And I believe going above 160 doesn't even do anything besides uh, causing more pressure or more bandwidth use, even though it's not really all that much. But if it doesn't do anything, then why risk it, right? So 128 or 160, and it should be pretty good to go. Broadcast settings. Now, this is where things should speak for itself you have your dashboard link you have your 
your stream key, which you can find on Twitch TV slash broadcast, if I'm not mistaken. In that broadcast department, you can find your dedicated stream key, which you enter here. Uh, you find out your closest server, uh, your closest server. It doesn't matter which one you pick. It would only, um, if I were to, for example, go to a, a US server, it just means that the delay between me and my viewers would be bigger. If I go to Amsterdam, it means the delay is smaller. So the um, it usually takes only five to 10 seconds and unless um, there is something wonky going on compared to the minute, for example, that it would take if I were to stream to a US server. So just go to the closest one and that should be okay. Doesn't really change anything. All right, the other, um, as you can see, you have options and while well, live stream kind of speaks for itself, streaming service, you kind of get the gist of it. This should speak for itself. Now video, this is where things get interesting. As you can see, you have a graphics card right here. Right now I'm using a 6950, uh, a borrowed graphics card, which is good enough to stream most of the good games these days, if you know what you're doing. Well, my resolution of my monitor is 1920 by 1080, as you can see. And I'm using a resolution downscale to 720p because streaming at a higher resolution also requires a better processor, which causes all kinds of issue, including also more data that is required, a higher bandwidth. And once again, I am not a Twitch partner. So the more bandwidth that I'm forced to use to make my stream crisp and nice looking just causes a lot more issues with people that don't have a good internet service provider. So you want to you don't want to really push it above 720p, even if you are a Twitch partner. Not a lot of people go above 720p anyway, because that's really good enough, especially if you have a decent bandwidth with a decent encoder. Well, use the billionaire filters the fastest. It doesn't really change anything. I'm currently running on a uh, 45 FPS, but it's because of my Team Fortress streams. It makes it a little bit smoother. Uh, 60 is even smoother. You don't want to go above 60. You really don't. And 30, well, that's basically the same frame rate as a YouTube video. So... There you go. I would recommend, if you don't know what, really what you're doing, I would recommend just going to 30, get a hang of it, and then trial and error. Try stuff out. Disable Arrow is highly recommended. This is also why I'm using Windows Basic. Arrow is known to have a lot of streaming issues uh, or causing issues with streaming-related subjects. So I kind of figured, let's disable it altogether and not have an issue whatsoever. I also have it disabled in my Windows. So you don't have that switch constantly, which would make you crazy as well. At least it made me crazy. So I turn it off completely everywhere. And well, like I said, everywhere. That's what I would recommend as well. So there you go. 720p max, I would recommend. But once again, it's up to you, really, isn't it? Here you have your settings for your headset. Well, I'm using a G35 as a headset. I have a AT2020 uh, USB condenser microphone. You get all that stuff sorted. You have advanced options right here. And this is also very important. You want to use multi-thread optimization. This allows you to use your full processor to use everything. Depending on your scene buffering, you should never go below 100, I have noticed. At least for me, depending on your processor, depending on your stream, it could be different. But usually, you don't really want to go below 100 because you want to give, uh, give some time to buffering. I have gone to 500 to reduce a bit of a, a lag issue I have, but this could be different for everybody. It depends on your gear, it depends on your uh, hardware, it depends on several things, so trial and error. This is why you sometimes have record a video on Twitch and see what it looks like. Process priority class, I would recommend going to above normal, so your computer focuses, well, the resources on keeping the stream alive. I would do that. Uh, allow auto modifier, uh, modifiers and hotkeys is up to you. This is where the real question comes into play, doesn't it? Your CPU preset. I got it on fast. I've got an i7-2600K. A little bit of an overclock. And I have noticed that faster is probably the, the lowest I can go without losing, uh, well, performance in my games that I play. If I were to go to fast, uh, yes, my encoder would be stronger. But my processor would be more focused on encoding instead of making sure that the game is fluid, right? I would I would lose FPS in games. You don't want that. So if you have an i7-2600K, I would usually go with faster or fast, depending on the game that you're playing, depending on how your CPU is overclocked as well. But faster should be pretty solid for an i7. If you have a better one, if you have a better CPU, I would definitely go to fast or medium. I wouldn't recommend slow or slower because that's just a, bit, a little bit of overkill. I would not go beyond medium. If you have a processor that can handle medium and still keep your games playing smoothly, 
Well, first of all, you have an amazing processor. And secondly of all, that would be the best possible thing, at least in my eyes. So there you go. Keyframe interval. Um, you have to have a required keyframe interval of at least two seconds. Well, there's a bit of a bug going on, a little bit something iffy. But you don't want to put it on two. If you put it on two, sometimes fluctuations happen. And then you have a key that happens beyond two well two seconds if that happens twitch doesn't like your stream and you're going to have issues with that because it's a requirement to have exactly two key uh well for each two seconds that you stream you have to have a keyframe interval so i always put it on one because it means even if there's fluctuations so let's say 1.4 1.6 it doesn't cross that two so twitch can't block my stream but it, it depends on what you're streaming at for example if i wanted to use uh, a custom encoder setting key int which is key interval is 60 for 60 fps this would be one second if i have 60 fps and i have 120 that would be every two seconds you kind of get a jit or if it's second and i stream at 30 fps it's two seconds you want to keep it uh if you use this manually you want to use this um somewhere between two seconds and one second i would recommend but if you use the latest uh, version of OBS, just keep this on one and you're good to go. It doesn't really matter. Just keep it on one. You're good to go. I promise you that. Um, audio settings. Well, that depends on your audio. I, I have a bit of a, a lag issue with my webcam and my audio. Um, and this is basically a trial or uh, well, a trial and error work solution if you will if you find yourself having a, a small syncing issue between your microphone and your webcam there are other fixes but uh this is basically just to get your stream started and if you have you find if you find yourself having issues that's where the trial and error comes out as well well microphone noise gate is pretty much nothing because it this only really works if you have a really sensitive microphone for whatever reason and you want to have this manually handle your mute and uh, unmute related questions which seems a bit iffy considering you should be streaming every single second that you're streaming therefore and if you want to take a break you can just mute your microphone right it no nobody all right keep it going so to make it quickly or to go quickly through it 2k is the guideline for 720p depending on your games depending on your encoder the higher your encoding you can scale down a little bit to keep the same quality but if you keep the same bandwidth and have a higher encoder it also means that your stream can handle more flashy things without losing quality but the guideline is 2k 128 or 160 constant bitrate go for it make sure you have the closest server make sure it's live stream twitch and that your path is up here as well video settings well, check out your resolution, scale it down if you need to, to 720p or use custom 720p right here so you don't have to scale down. The difference is minimal, um, but I find this to be a little bit a bit easier for me at least. Make sure it's billionaire because it's the fastest because that's what you want. And of course, disable arrow. Audio, make sure your settings are all right. Make sure it's above normal. Multi-thread optimization has to be on. Make sure that's all right. Start off with 100. Figure out if you need more buffering or not. Your preset has to be something your processor can handle. I have an i7-2600K, uh, so I can handle faster without too much of an issue and having way uh, enough space left for any game that I want to play. And make sure that your key interval is between 1 and 2 seconds. Otherwise, just put it on 1, and there you go. This was my guide for OBS to the current Twitch settings. I hope uh, it helped you out. If you have any questions, Google is your best friend. And I will catch you guys next time. Take care.